Morning Year 12 and welcome to the third week of your summer half term one. Um, obviously we've got um, a few more weeks perhaps of this. There should be uh, a bit of further indication perhaps on Thursday about when schools uh, might be returning to, to a slight degree of normality. I think that idea of normality we might need to shift and if you watch Mr Kilbride's assembly from Wednesday um, he talked about um, trying to make the impossible possible and it, it could be that we have to drastically rethink how we, we approach our um, our school day. But just once again, thank you for your attitude and thank you for how uh, you're, you're, you're going through this. We don't have any further knowledge than you have. So as soon as we hear anything from the government um, or if there's any advice about how schools might be reopening or what's going to happen for year 12s, we'll be letting you know. So please do continue to check your emails. Um, you know, we will we will try and um, pass that information on to you as soon as we can. I'm not going to explain this picture at the very start. I'm going to come back to it at the very end. Um, there is a, a you know a good reason why I've, I've started with uh, what appears to be uh, a, a very nice uh, main uh, course. So uh, notice is there's really no real change from from last week to be honest, um, other, other than one. Um, once again. Um, you know you've been doing really well this past week under the circumstances just a reminder if you're unsure about how um the work is going if you're unsure about specific task if you're struggling then you just need to email your teachers um, teachers are being very understanding at the moment they're going through perhaps some of the same feelings as well um, you know it's natural to feel demotivated at the moment it's natural to, to sometimes lose that energy what I would suggest is that you, you try and stick to that timetable that you had before um, and, and utilize that as much as you can. The teachers are, are setting work um, as per your usual timetable, so try and stick to it. EBQ online lessons are available on this YouTube account, as are the same with uh, AS Thinking Skills. Haven't had too many people um, watch the Thinking Skills ones, um, so if you are doing the Thinking Skills, can you just drop me an email um, just with your name? Just saying I'm, I'm doing this particular course and that'd be really helpful and I can pass on resources to you as well. Um, I'll be uploading those new videos every single Monday, but it might be at the very end of the Monday uh, because I might have some other things that I need to do. Virtual speaker talks. If you go on speakers for schools and um, there's plenty of information there. Highly recommend that you go on and, and have a bit of a look and um, there might be some, you know, it might not be that you're watching that many of them. It might be that you just timetable one in, um, you know, for example, I, I went to this webinar on, on Friday about positive mindset, um, you know, during uh, a lockdown. Uh, and it, that was the only one that I've, I've watched so far, but that was that was quite useful. And, and what I'm going to try and do is just watch one per week. So it's on speakers for schools. Do have a look and um, information about the remaining prefect talks on those people that had prefect interviews already. I'll be passing that on next Monday. Miss Sparks and I have come up with a bit of a strategy and a bit of a plan um, and we'll be sharing that next week. But there's no need to overload and there's no need to worry. Uh, we're trying to uh, simplify the whole process. Um, societies and super curricula, um, remember, uh, you know, I'm just going to say that every single week, there's no pressure to get involved, it is purely voluntary. Um, there's a new debate that will start on Wednesday, so that'll be a Mr Kilbride assembly again, thanks to Zaina and Noah uh, for sorting that out. Uh, May's book for the Literature Society is Brave New World by Aldous Huxley. If you've ever read it before, um, it's, I'd say it's a bit akin to 1984 by George Orwell. Um, it's about a dystopian future um, and you can listen to it for free on Audible um, and I think if you've got a Kindle that might be free on a Kindle as well um, so I'd, I'd recommend um, listening to that. Um, if you don't want to listen to to Brave New World or if you don't want to get involved in that particular book still good opportunity to read um, I don't know if you, you're aware but Harry Potter I think the first two Harry Potters are also free on Audible at the moment so it might be that you, you want to start listening to them just to kind of take your mind off it um, so, um, and the final thing again is uh, you might be missing your sports, so set challenges for daily runs on apps such as Strava. It's what I did last week, um, managed to do a 10k in an incredibly poor time, um, got drenched halfway round as well, um, around my, um, my local area, uh, but that's, that's keeping me a little bit sane. So I'm doing, trying to do that maybe twice a week um, and, and trying to, to kind of record my scores and see if I'm, I'm improving. But you, if you've got something like Strava, you can set competitions against one another as well. I'll be trying to send out more information as well over the course of the next week about maybe drop-ins and, and how we can um, start perhaps socialising but not necessarily seeing each other. So socialising under social distancing and, and doing it um, via you know, the, the powers of the internet. 
So um, we'll be sending some more information out about that by the end of, of this week. Um, but if, you've, if you're doing things like quizzes on Zoom or if you're um, trying to catch up with each other on um, like WhatsApp uh, video calls, um, they are really good ways in which you can continue to connect with each other. Uh, and again, I would highly recommend that. So um, being a teacher and most of my friends not being teachers, on Friday we did a Taskmaster um, and I, I organised that. Uh, I don't know how much they liked it, but it kept me occupied um, for an hour or two trying to set it all up. If you don't know what Taskmaster is, it's got on YouTube. Um, it's, a, it's a way in which you can try and think about lateral thinking. So try and come up with different ways in which you can connect with each other rather than just telling stories because you'll start running out of them. So if you do, you're doing things like quizzes, Taskmaster, um, I don't know if you've heard of World Cup of Everything, that's another good one to get involved in. Just ways in which you can connect and we'll be sending some more information about, out about that by the end of this week. So um, we did say uh, in last week's assembly that we'd be talking about UCAS and higher apprenticeships again and we're, we're continuing that particular theme today and throughout this half term. And, and I did say that for today I'd like you to get involved in uh, your Unifrog and doing your activities and competencies list. Um, really good to see so many people getting involved that if you haven't done that already please just start recording down some activities at least. Um, the activities is, is the really important one just so that you've got it centralised here the, the things that I've done and you can start ticking them off for when we, we start writing up your personal statements and, and that's what we're going to start talking about today. Uh, we're not going to be writing up our personal statements in a week, it's, it's not that kind of process but we're going to start the ball rolling. So. What I'm going to tell you is, is basically just advice. Um, so you'll find a lot of conflicting information online about personal statements. You'll find a lot of people saying this is what I've done. You'll find plenty of examples if you go on Unifrog of personal statements for plenty of different courses. Um, but I thought I'd just try and break it down into the, to the very basic components that you need. So if you're writing an Oxbridge personal statement, so that means that you're applying for Oxford or Cambridge, then you would probably need to have a personal statement that's about 85% academic and 15% extras. So they're things like uh, co-curricular or um, extracurricular. If you're a non-Oxbridge student, which is the vast majority of you, then you would follow this particular structure. And even if you're an Oxbridge student, I would advise that you start with this structure and then we change your drafts as we're going along. So the general structure is this. The first third of your personal statement, so the first uh, paragraph, is about why you love that subject and why you want to study that particular subject. If you're doing a higher apprenticeship, then it's exactly the same. So why do you want to go into finance? Why do you want to go into engineering, construction, media, digital marketing, whatever it may be? The second paragraph is about what you've done that enhances your love of this particular subject. So those are linking to your activities, your subjects, and what kind of competencies you've brought out from them. The final paragraph is to do with your extracurricular. So it might be that you on the side do martial arts, it might be that you play rugby, it might be that you play hockey, it might be that you play a musical instrument, those kind of things we talk about in that final paragraph. And we'll be showing different examples and you'll get the chance to have a look at a few of them over the course of the next few weeks and you can go on, on Unifrog and, and have a look at that. But what I, I want you to do is, is a few things um, for this next week. It's nothing too onerous, it's nothing too difficult, and, and really you can go at your own pace. So I know a few of you are itching to, to kind of get on and, and start writing a few things, and you can do that. Likewise, this week you can start just planning, start thinking, start reflecting. The first thing that I would suggest that you do is go on to Unifrog and look at the UK Personal Statement Tool. Um, this is where you're going to be writing your drafts. The reason why you're going to be doing this on Unifrog is because it automatically sends it to any teacher that um, is interested in looking on your account. So rather than having a big email thread and, and things getting lost, teachers can just log on to Unifrog, they can click on your account and they can look at your personal statement and they can give advice. And that advice can, can be sent back to you straight away. So there's no big email thread, it's all on Unifrog. The other reason why we would suggest doing it on Unifrog is because it offers you advice um, and it's got this template that we've just talked about there, those three different paragraphs, and you can just fill out essentially the boxes there. It gives you examples, gives you things to do, not to do. Um, it's, it's very easily laid out for you. At the very end, what you can do is you can then um, send that to a Word document and you can you know, edit it at the Word document stage. Mrs. Appley and myself at the very end of um, the the process of, of, of looking at personal statements. We do at that stage like to have a look at the full Word document 
what we can do is we can then start moving things around and changing it. But what we would say is that you're embarking on on quite a, a big task, even though it's in, in the grand scheme of things, it's, it's not that long at all. You know, 4,000 characters is about a page of writing. But this is something that we will be helping you out with. We, we will be quite blunt about our advice. Um, and it's something that if you start early and you start doing your drafts, you'll get more and more feedback. So these are the things that I'd like you to, to think about over the next week. And these are questions that UniFrog have posed as well. These are very valid, very useful. So the first thing that I would su suggest that you do is give a personal anecdote about why you are interested in your chosen subject or what sparked your interest in that subject. Now, the vast majority of people at this stage, when we pose this question, will come along with the response of, I've always wanted to be a, um, a doctor since I was two years old, um, or I really wanted to uh, be a marine biologist because I watched Finding Nemo. Um, it's important that you're honest, um, but likewise, what we're not wanting are cliches. So cliches like, I, I want to go into this particular field because... Um, it's something that I saw somebody doing when I was really young and you know that job then ended up becoming my superhero job and um, we're not looking for those kind of things but we are looking for honesty so um, if I give you my personal example uh, I wanted to do history at university and my personal statement said that I wanted to study history because I genuinely enjoyed finding out about new um, periods of history that I hadn't studied before and that doing a degree would mean that I had the opportunity to find out about cultures that I, I had yet to look at. So it, that's quite a dry response. It's not um, it's not necessarily going to set the world alight, but it is the truth uh, and it's, it's not something that I've just made up. The second thing that you should reflect on and, and should start thinking about is trying to think of times or experiences that you've had that have shown real enthusiasm for your subject. Now, if you've done your activities already, it might be that one of those activities is linked to the subject that you want to study. But it might be that you don't have that. It might be that you're going to have to have a, a, you know, a bit of a think. It could be things that you've done in school, out of school, things that you've watched, things that you've read. Um, and as I keep saying to you, if you go onto that subjects library, you look at the geek out tab for the subject that you're interested in. There's some really good um, activities that you can do there that might show that you've got that real enthusiasm for the subjects because personal statements want to see students that are going above and beyond what is in the classroom. And finally, what do you do already and what else could you do to demonstrate interest in that subject? And that again links to that Geek Out tab under the subjects library tool. Um, but not just the, the thing that really shows that passion, what other kind of activities have you done that potentially link to the same skill sets that that subject wants? So it might be that you do D of E, but you want to study microbiology. Well, try and have a think, what's the link between the two? How does doing D of E and volunteering along with D of E link to studying microbiology at university? Um, and it might be that you surprise yourself and you, it might be that lots of those activities that you've recorded actually demonstrate interest in that particular subject area. So what I would suggest that you do is I would suggest that you start thinking about a first draft of your personal statement, start writing down some ideas. You can see plenty of examples on there. There's no deadline for this at the moment, um, but you'll get advice next week on writing styles. Um, I'll show you next week about sample paragraphs, what they look like, but it might be that you want to make a start on that. Um, if you go onto Unifrog and you start typing it in, Ms. Sparks uh, and myself will be checking sporadically through the week We'll be able to offer some comments as well on things that we, you might want to change, things that you might want to add, uh, things that actually um, might not be relevant at this particular stage. So um, we would recommend that you start doing this. But if you don't feel up to this, then you can go back and you can do those three questions and continue with those activities as well. So I did say at the very start that there was a reason behind this particular picture. Um, this is, is from Ethan in, in year seven. And what we've been doing over the past few weeks is we've been setting these super curricular activities for, for year seven, eight, nine and ten students. We've tried to give them as much choice as possible, but trying to get them um, for an hour a day to do something completely different. And, and last week um, I came up with this idea of, of them cooking a, a budgeted uh, three course meal for their family. Um, it was amazing to see how many year seven students got involved in this. Ethan was one of, 
uh, probably about 20 in a cohort of about 80 that did a three course meal for their parents and their families um, and the number of emails I've got from parents uh, and from students saying that they enjoyed this particularly the parents as well I think they, they, they like the fact that they were doing something away from their subject areas but also it, it kind of showed this this care um, and and um, just genuine I don't know, I don't know a different way to say it genuine niceness um, that it is quite difficult to see in, in, in social distancing um, it was something that was it was probably a good activity for the student but it was it was nice for the family that that seems to be the consistent emails that I'm, I'm getting from family members about this so if you have the chance um, try and have a think today about how potentially you can not just support yourself because we're trying to support you. you I know that you'll be thinking about how you can you know, help yourself through this but how you can help the people that are around you and that you're in lockdown with and um, what kind of little things can you do to make them um, feel a little bit better if you're doing quizzes at the moment if you're doing World Cup of Everything or Taskmaster or cooking them a meal um, it can be the small things as well but we all need to be looking after ourselves and looking after each other during this um, this difficult time period and I'm sure that you'll be doing that already but it might be that um, you try and keep on thinking of creative ways in, in which you can keep that positivity in your household going. Thanks very much for listening. And uh, if you have any questions about anything to do with the personal statements, if you've got any queries, remember, we're only an email away.